welcome back to our another anatomy tutorial where we are going to be talking about the small and large intestine of the sheep or small ruminants in a previous video we talked about the stomach and now we will continue after the abomasum as you can see here we can find the first section of the small intestine this is the cranial duodenal flexure and this this part of the duodenum is the descending duodenum is located normally on the right side a little bit caudally uh, the duodenum forms the caudal flexure caudal duodenal flexure and moves cranially again to form the ascending duodenum this structure which we can see embedded inside the mesentery of the duodenum uh, is the pancreas so this is the pancreas after the ascending duodenum the next section of the small intestine is the jejunum uh, we can notice how the mesentery of the jejunum is longer or bigger than that one of the duodenum so this is all parts of the jejunum is relatively or the longest part of the small intestine and if you look exactly here we can see the jejunal arteries and veins inside the mesentery of the jejunum the jejunal lymph nodes are very uh, unique in small ruminants uh, where you can see this very long longitudinal structure represents the jejunal lymph nodes this one here is very developed and embedded inside the mesentery of the jejunum as you can see here as we said before within the mesentery of the jejunum there are particularly very developed lymph nodes in this area the jejunal lymph nodes they vary in size sometimes they are very long and some, sometimes they are bean shaped as you can see here they provide immune protection against ingested bacteria and now let's uh, look for the last section of the small intestine which is the ileum and the best way to find the ileum is to find the cecum as there's a plica extends between the cecum and the ileum the iliocecal fold so in this case this is the ileum here this is the iliocecal fold as we say so this is ileum this is cecum and the fold the iliocecal fold extends between them so if you follow the fold the last part of the fold represents or indicate the border between the ileum and jejunum again this is the iliocecal fold this is the ileum and this is the cecum the ileum enters the cecum which is a blind ending structure found on the right side of the abdomen this is the entrance area and this area indicates the border between the cecum and the ascending colon this is the beginning of the ascending colon this is the proximal part of the ascending colon or the proximal loop or proximal flexure this is then followed by the spiral column which is also a part of the ascending column so after the proximal loop we have the spiral column here we can identify the centripetal loops and in the middle here we have the central flexor and after that the centrifugal loops into the last part of the ascending colon which is the distal loop or distal flexor after the ascending colon we have the transverse colon uh, up to the descending colon and find this is the descending colon and finally to the rectum
and now let's move to see the position of the perhaps ascending colon and some other intestine inside the abdominal cavity as you can see here this is the greater omentum move to the side here with the rumen here in this area we can see the spiral colon located on the right side and here ventrally and on the right side we can see the jejunum